Good morning, everyone, and I hope you all had a good weekend. And I know for some of you that this is actually the second day uh, back uh, from the weekend. Uh, thank you for joining the uh, webinar. Um, hang on a sec. Okay. That's, um, so what I'd like to do is I'll give an update on the NDC program. Um, I'm not going to talk about what and why of NDC. And if any of you don't understand what NDC is, um, please contact me separately and I'll be happy to arrange um, a session to talk to you about that. We'll cover the um, a program update and then we'll look at the campaign. Jojo will cover briefly um, the sort of timelines and the logistics of the campaign. Campaign. And then um, I'll go through the questionnaire and then hopefully we'll have uh, plenty of time for any questions that you may have. So if we move to the um, first slide, um, th there's been a reorganization within the, um, within the One Order and NDC team. And in effect, um, both of them have merged. Uh, and so now Yannick is, is heading both NDC and One Order, and um, uh, oh, I forgot his name, Sebastian Turan now is heading a program that's looking at um, dynamic pricing. So this is the uh, structure of the team, and you'll see me down on the towards the bottom right. Uh, you've also got Ronnie um, in Beijing, and also the you you have Cecile and Valerie. Covering um, the other, uh, covering the Americas and Asia with support of the TMP staff. So if we move on. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. So what's been happening? Last year was a pretty good year. We made all our targets. Um, the glo global target was achieved, and that was that. Um, carriers or airlines that represented 55% of IATA members would be NDC certified. We actually got two um, carriers representing 61. And um, we set up the NDC leaderboard and the foundations have been put in place. So our emphasis in 2018 was to shift away from individual uh, implementations where we would look at a carrier and get them to go live and it's now focusing more on the carriers that are live, the leaderboard carriers, to get them to put significant volumes um, through the BSP. So the, just to recap, um, the, tar the, the uh, leaderboard target is that the 21 airlines that are in the leaderboard, and they represent 30% out of that 61%, um, those 21 carriers will have 20% of their indirect transactions powered by NDC by 2020. Uh, so moving on. Uh, these are the airlines that are still live, uh, or that are live, I should say. Um, we're expecting more carriers will implement over over the year, and, and I have been contacted by several um, in Europe and the Middle East and Africa that are, are, are looking to certify, and I'm sure in the other regions you also have been uh, contacted. And all of this information is on the uh, on on the NDC pages on IATA.org. There's you'll get a lot of information there. You can drill down on each of these airlines to see what they've specifically done. So what version of the schemas they're using, what level of certification they've achieved, and I'll cover the differences on levels uh, a bit later, and also um, who they partnered with on their initial deployments. And, and of course, if you have any questions at any time, please um, post them up. So, con yeah, continuing. Um, so these are the NDC leaderboard airlines, and um, we've been working with them extensively over last year. Uh, what we're, what will we do, do is um, produce a CEO report for each of those airlines. We're, we're going to produce a, um, an upcoming CEO report um, for the ne for the next AGM, and that will focus on what percentage of volumes that they have um, uh, gone live with, um, what their sort of readiness is, what what their capabilities are, etc. So we'll be be grading them on that. So we are working with the airlines. 
the way we're looking at capturing their uh, data for anyone who's interested is we're going to use DDS. So the airlines will flag in DDS which transactions are, are NDC powered and from there we'll, we'll be able to calculate their um, percentage of capability. And just to let you know um, that we, we already have some airlines uh, and I'll talk about interim targets for 2019 a bit later, um, but just to just, well, I'll just mention it now that we, uh, we have 20% for the end of 2020, but we are looking at 8%. So all of those carriers collectively to have implemented 8% by the end of this year. And I can tell you there are several carriers that are above 10%. Also, there are several below, but um, we're looking in good shape in order to achieve that target. Thanks, Jojo. Um, a lot of IT providers that are capable. Uh, I've spoken and seen uh, and met with a lot of um, a lot of the uh, IT providers. There's some interesting solutions going out on the market recently. Uh, I know with uh, um, Coco, I went and met Aaron Group, for example, in um, um, in the Czech Republic in Prague, and and it seems to me what a lot of these guys are doing, um, they're they're connecting with airlines, they're seeking to build connectivity, but the the um, the smart thing they're doing is they're integrating GDS content um, with airline API, which makes sense because we do have 66 airlines live, but we, we also have hundreds that aren't. So that, so for several years, there will be a, there will need to be sort of dual capability. And um, again, another uh, um, company I, I met recently, Atris um, in Vienna, also doing that, they're offering traditional GDS content uh, along with airline API direct content. Um, all three of the big GDS are live um, with the NDC. Travelport are currently piloting. And uh, in January, I, I, I was uh, able to see a demo of what they've done. They, they're working with British Airways. Uh, no surprise, they've enabled um, their agents to use their traditional sort of what they call green screen ways of booking and also they, they can switch to API. Uh, <coughs> Sabre, I believe, recently announced something and Amadeus are working to have something available at the end of the year and I think they're also working with British Airways. Um, 20 uh, live uh, travel agencies or TMCs that are certified, not as many as you as you see for the airlines and IT providers, which makes sense because unless the the travel agency has their own IT and does their own and builds their own sort of solutions, um, they're going to depend on an IT provider. But we we have um, well Hog Robinson HRG. Um, they they were building their own aggregation tool. Of course, now we're, we're a little bit, um, you know, we don't know what the, exactly are their plans now that they've become part of Amex. But there are other agents like Click Travel that that are implementing their own. So it's a great opportunity, not just for IT providers, but for TMCs to get involved. Um, so we've. Uh, just to let you know, we have several working groups. I mean, you're, you're, you, those of you who've been around long enough are, are probably aware that when we launched NDC, it caused quite a stir across the industry. And uh, um, we were accused of taking a top-down approach with, um, with the agents and with the GDS. We, we sort of, um, uh, let's say, you could say they, you know, we were imposing NDC, but since then, and certainly for the last two or three years, we've been trying to address that. And so, in order to do that, we've set up two um, working groups within um, within the uh, the NDC program. One is the Global Travel Management Executive Council, and that is working with large TMCs. Uh, and the, 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 the objective there is to make sure that we address 
what the travel agents are looking. Uh, and one of the results of, of that, and I'll show you a bit later, is we, we've come up with a reference architecture of the processes that are the travel agents um, you know that for, for travel agents operations and we're looking to refine that so we will continue working with the agents to make sure that their requirements and needs are addressed and certainly when we talk about NDC at scale I'll show you some of the other things that we're um, planning on doing the other thing we've set sorry uh, if we just go back is the travel management advisory group and that's looking at it from the corporate uh, aspects. So uh, one of the things we did there was we set up a proper thon, which is like a hackathon, um, uh, but it's with the sort of business users rather than with the IT developers. So what we did was we, we got a, about 20 of the, or 15 of the, sorry, um, we got a, a number of corporates, I don't know the exact number, apologies, uh, and uh, sat them down and asked them to come up with some ideas on what they wanted. Uh, they came up with about 20. We're refining that down to about four or five that we can present to the airlines. So you can see here that we've we've addressed the top down and we're, we're, we're looking at a more bottom-up uh, approach to NDC. Um, We've also set up a developer's uh, portal, which you may or may not be aware of, called Air Tech Zone. Uh, it's worth going to have a look at that. Uh, it's got information on the hackathons. It's got information on the implementation forums. And what we do here is we bring together all of the live implementers for an event. And you can see we've got one coming up in May in Montreal. Um, and they and then we discuss the issues. So what are the, the major challenges? We get some demonstrate or some presentations from those that have gone live, and it's generally a forum for those uh, entities that are live with NDC to sort of get together and, and address issues and uh, and see uh, and, and discuss best pra best practices. Um, there's also links to an implementation guide, and there are developers' tools such as access to testing sandboxes. So it's definitely, uh, uh, and in addition to that, there's a, um, there's a, a community forum where developers or anyone can pose questions and get answers. So uh, it's worth going to have a look if you haven't seen it before. Um, so we, we uh, We've produced a number of publications, again on the website, one pages, addressing some of the key uh, aspects of the program that, uh, or key issues that um, that are that are concerning the developers or uh, um, out there. So, for example, um, there's NDC at scale. There's also looking at the um, uh, of an in focus, and these are one pages looking at. Um, the um, what is an API, uh, the differences between the different versions, um, and uh, various other things such as the uh, uh, reference architecture that I mentioned that we produced for agents. So again, um, if you haven't seen them, check out uh, the in focus documents <coughs> on um, on the NDC pages. Um, so as I mentioned. Uh, we we are addressing and looking at issues beyond that um you know what the airlines want what the agents uh are concerned about and what we real recognized was that to get to level three or to get certified which the 66 airlines have done you can do it uh with a fairly simple uh, set of functionality. So in other words, you need to be able to do shopping. So, you know, request for services and, and responses, and you need to be able to create an order. In other words, um, issue a ticket and the PR. But it didn't address servicing. And a number of airlines have implemented NDC without really considering the servicing aspect. So what about changes, voluntary or involuntary? So now we've introduced a new level, level four, which uh, includes a number of service messaging. So 
All of those leaderboard airlines that I mentioned, they have to become certified at level four. So that is going to address some of the issues that the agents have, have uh, brought to our attention. But in addition to that, we're introducing a further uh, NDC certification level, which is NDC at scale. So it has all of the level four requirements plus six additional criteria and to give you some idea um, level four and level three all of the levels uh, below NDC at scale they're really addressing technical capability so an airline for example that wanted to show that they were uh, live would, would send in the application and send some sample messages we'd run the messages um, against the schema the NDC schema and if they um, passed uh, then the airline certified. However, that doesn't take into account the functionality. So NDC at scale will address use cases, so make sure that they can handle um, certain uh, situations that are everyday for the agents, plus other uh, business-related requirements. So do you have um, a help desk in place? Do you have uh, what is your after hour servicing? Uh, these kind of things, it's addressing beyond just the simple technical capability and looking more uh, at, at um, the, the whole business process. Are, is your airline, for another example, is, is your airline able to handle large volumes of transactions? So these kinds of things we're looking at. So again, all 21 leaderboard airlines will have to become certified NDC at scale. So that should address a lot of concerns that maybe you have heard from agents regarding uh, what um, what is out there um, for the, the airlines in your regions that have implemented NDC. Um, so this is a, a, a little bit more detail on the NDC at scale and overview. Uh, I won't go into it. Uh, you can, there's documentation on the website. So there's a, a presentation that explains the changes for NDC at scale. And there's also, if you get the application form off, uh, it, it also details exactly what's required. But as you can see, it's much more comprehensive than the, the simple level three certification that we've had so far. So now we're looking at, um, as mentioned, uh, for this year and beyond, we will continue driving that critical mass. So our, uh, our goal for, um, was to, up to 2017 was 45, 2018 it was to have 55% of volumes. This year we are looking at that leaderboard being at 8% at the end of the year. So we're going to be focusing this year and next year on getting those volumes. And of course, we will continue to support um, the non-live airlines. And, and with that in mind, that's why we're running the campaign. It's important, I think, we address um, what's, you know, we don't, we don't just focus on those 21 airlines. There's still a lot of airlines out there. They're still um, trying to find out what's the best uh, way forward for their, their distribution strategy and, and we'll continue to support them. And indeed, I would emphasize to, to the airlines that you will be contacting as part of the campaign that uh, a number of their competitor airlines are moving ahead with NDC and they really should consider uh, what is their distribution strategy? Um, are they going to uh, provide um, offers? Are they going to take control of their offer process? Um, and are they going to connect to, to agents using API? Or are they going to continue uh, with the GDS path? Um, so yeah, I don't really need to cover much more. As I say, the target is 8%. I'm not sure on where we are at the moment. I think we're probably about three or four percent, but I do know that there's at least two or three airlines that are over 10 percent. But there are also airlines that um, there, there's an airline that hasn't actually gone live yet. So um, we're, we're we are um, going to um, I think be challenged certainly throughout the year. But I'm confident we'll make the target, um, and we. 
we will work with airlines. What we what I expect will happen is we're going to have some airlines, hopefully with large volumes, that greatly overachieve the target, and they will compensate for any that uh, happen to be below target for this year. Um, this is the CEO report that we're going to be uh, producing in um, in the uh, for, for the for the AGM, and. Uh, uh, in each of your regions, somebody will be talking to your leaderboard airlines. So I've been talking with um, the European and um, African Middle Eastern airlines um, that are on in the leaderboard uh, to discuss this. So just quickly, there are four uh, aspects that will will. Um, you, they'll be measured on their roadmap to, to ensure that they they have a roadmap in place and that it's um, it's being tracked. Uh, that they're certified at level three. I think all of them will be will be there. Um, and then uh, their volumes. Uh, some will be. We're not going to color grade them on volumes. That's one thing. So uh, ignore that coloring on the volumes. We will just put their percentage. Um, that they're, that they're uh, actually reporting. The value, this is where I'm talking with the, um, the airlines, is I have a sheet of use cases, um, and there are two aspects of that. One describes the um, use cases they need in order to get, um, to get uh, certification at scale, um, and they will be measured against the other leader leaderboard airlines on that to give them a, a sort of status. And the other is TMC capability. So um, we've we've described the number of uh, use cases we expect them to be capable on, but we also have feedback from the TMCs as to what are the minimum they need. So they'll be measured on both of those. Um, I am definitely not going through this. <laughs> so this is our business plan. Uh, obviously, you're going to get the slides, so you're, you're happy to look at any of these and address them. But this, this is essentially what the team is going to be working on over this next year. Uh, and, and we sat down at the, you know, towards the end of last year and the beginning of this year and drew up this list. If you think that uh, there may be anything missing from this, uh, I'd be happy to hear from you and I'll address it um, with uh, Yannick and the team in Geneva. Um, these are the events coming up. So we've just held uh, the latest hackathon in Seattle. I believe we're going to have another hackathon in Madrid in June. I'm not sure on uh, um, uh, any other hackathons outside of that. We have a Air Business Travel Summit. Um, and this is going to address, uh, it's kind of like a mini uh, air symposium. So it's it's um, not really a technical event. We'll get a lot of the, the, um, the let's say, live entities. So that will be TMCs, airlines, IT providers there. And it's uh, generally a, a chance to demo their solutions. Outside of those, we do have the implementation forums, which is much more um, technical. Next one will be in Montreal in May. And of course, we have uh, a number of working groups meeting. So the shop order board. Um, and also, on, you, you're aware from the, the standards presentations that there's a number of different boards set up looking at the standards. So shop order board is addressing um, the standard as, as it applies to NDC. So uh, let's move on to the campaign. I'll hand back to Jojo. Um, uh, I, do you want me to go through this? The regional or? support, yeah. Sorry? The regional support, because it's out of the campaign. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, OK, so beyond just the, we, we have a board target of 8%. Uh, sales powered by NDC API, and we're going to produce two CEO reports. We are expecting level four certification, certification, and level four was introduced about a month ago. Um, we'll we'll do checkpoints. We're, we're expecting DDS tracking in place. Um, so that's another thing. Each one of well, it's not 
actually um, compulsory that they report via DDS because obviously some airlines may not even be um, signed up for DDS. But yeah. for those that are uh, DDS, and I, I'm unaware of any that aren't, there may be, I'll, I'll have to check, but we, for the majority, will be using DDS. So they, they need to implement a software change so that they flag in their DDS feeds that um, whether a transaction is NDC or not. In addition to that, we're looking uh, to get five to ten followers, non-live airlines, um, live um, or certified uh, this year. So um, in each region, you're going to have one or two. So this, the campaign, I think, is a useful tool for you in order to gauge who's near readiness, who possibly could meet that, um, be, be that one or two that you, you will probably have in your region. Um, and of course, with the merging of one order into the team, we will be coming, the, 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 uh, I, I guess the lines between NDC and one order will become more blurred. So the focus, uh, and I, I heard this a little bit more last year, we're obviously with some a term like um, new distribution capability that was launched in 2013 it's now six years old it's not so new so we're, we're with NDC and one order the focus is more on airline retailing and I think that's what we're we're aiming for we're, we're, we will gradually transition towards airline digital rate retailing rather than NDC and one order as, as separate um, uh, entities uh, there's a question. Yeah. Maybe before we proceed, um, please one more time regarding what is level four. Okay. Should we go back? Sure. Yeah. Uh, that's it. That's it. Yeah. So, uh, level two, forget about it. I don't think anyone uh, was certified on it. But level three means that an airline or um, IT provider or TMC is it has the capability for shopping. So in other words, it can receive a request and then it can respond with uh, there's a seat on this flight, there's a bag and it costs this much, there's a seat, you can have a paid seat, it's this much. So that's the shopping. And order management means um, that they can create an order and view an order. And that's the key thing. By create, it means that they can uh, create a PNR, issue a ticket, issue an EMD in, in today's world. But in, in where we're looking to transition, transition to is to create an order and to be able to view that order. However, it doesn't address any changes to that order after it's been created. And that's what level four is doing. And unfortunately, uh, a lot of airlines have, have rushed out their NDC offerings uh, at level three. And for the agents to make a change, they often have to call the airline's help desk or, or uh, service desk um, in order to, to, to just make a change of flight. And similarly, if the airline does a schedule change on the flight, you know, the, the airlines, some airlines didn't have the capability to, to, to send that message. Because remember, that's an unsolicited message coming from the airline. So level four is addressing that. It is including servicing messages such as order change notif. Um, that, that is one uh, for anyone who's, who's inclined uh, to, to look at the schemas. So it addresses post booking changes. And that's a key thing the agents were asking for. There's another question. Is there a webcast webinar um, regarding fundamentals of NDC and how it works? Yes, we're going to come on. Oh, I, we never incorporated Valerie's slide. Did um, we? Basically, for internal people, there are a lot of presentations and webcasts and materials for NDC that I will be able to share with you after this call so that you can actually re-educate yourself about NDC and if that's not enough and you would like to really be more than informed about NDC so you can explain it better please do let us know and we can definitely have a one-on-one -on -one call with you and with your TNP manager to really deep dive you on NDC. Um, on another note is that um, 
there is actually going to be an external webcast totally unrelated to the campaign but can be used to actually help the campaign is that on the 24th and 30th of April, um, NDC team will be opening an external webcast to all the airlines that are not yet certified and even those that are certified and basically the two topics is that the NDC basics for the first session and the second one will be a deep dive about NDC. And as part of the campaign material, we will definitely send you the invite that you can use to your airline so that you can use this webcast to realign them so that the discussion for the campaign is easier for you. Okay? And um, uh, I'm more than happy to do a one-on-one -on -one or one-on-a-group one -on group, uh, to set up a webcast to, to do that with any of you. And I'm sure Ronnie uh, in Beijing as well would be equally happy to do that as well. So if you if you want a um, if you want any educational on NDC, uh, please contact me. I'd be more than happy to set up a, a little webinar similar to this and just uh, run through it on the on the why and the what. Definitely. Oh, there's another question. Level four is level four is clear, and NDC at scale is something individual. Uh, no, um, with NDC at scale, uh, let's go down, it's addressing, um, it goes beyond, the, the thing with level three and level four, it's only addressing te technical capability. If you can send in um, the sample messages and they pass, we regard you as certified, but that doesn't mean to say, obviously, um, that you're you're able to to do the business processes. So we're looking to move beyond that and address, you know, what kind of help desk do you have in place? Uh, how do you handle with any bugs or or, um, or or any issues that are reporting? Um, you know, what's your 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 staff setup? Um, are you able to do these use cases? So we will say, are you able to do a simple shopping request? Can you do a, a seat map request? Can you do a this? Can you do a that? So it's looking more at the business process and, and looking at use cases than on technical functionality. Good. Um, yeah, regarding the webcast itself, the external webcast invitation will definitely be shared with your TNP managers and forwarded to you. Yep, we're, we'll be sending that out. Um, well, Valerie, who's, who's running it, we're sending it out. But of course, uh, I'm more than happy to do a one on one or, you know, one on a group with uh, anyone who's who, who wants an education on NDC. OK, um, regarding the campaign. So thank you so much for that. So for the campaign is that um, we will actually be recycling a lot of the materials from last year in terms of questions because the way we have been handling NDC for the last few years is that we have actually been monitoring the airline almost on the same basis for the last five years. So the part of the campaign materials that we will be providing to you is that what they've actually said last year. And the airline scope that we have, we actually have around 129 for tier 2. And these are IATA member airlines, and we have less than 30 airlines for Tier 3. Um, the campaign completion will be 90% for Tier 2, and for Tier 3 is actually 50%. Basically, is that it's quite interesting to look, is that it is the same airline we have been engaged in for the last five years, but we still have 29% of those that said they do not know yet if they're going to implement NDC or not. And they have not even specify that they have no plans, but they still don't know. So I think it was quite interesting to, you know, when we talk to the air, to the airlines is that go back to the, the previous information that they have provided to us last year, it will be shared with you, and then go from there and not start a discussion from scratch. And then out of the airlines that we have engaged as well is that 15% of them have no plans. Um, it is, uh, quite interesting to revisit them um, to see if all of those changes that has happened for NDC for the last one year, um, especially with the implementation of leaderboard, do they still have no plans to implement NDC? And 41% of the airlines we have engaged have actually said they're going to implement NDC last year and beyond. So, and of course, they have not implemented NDC, otherwise they will not be part of the scope. So I think the discussion with them will be different, you know, because they have already 
committed to a date um, or at least a month on when they're going to implement. So it would be good to actually recheck with them um, what's their plan because if they have not done in 2018, what's the reason? And if the 2019 is their plan, then are we still on track on that? And if they need any support? And also last year, we have not received a few airlines feedback. Um, and some of them as well is that we know that ongoing reorganization or in a very difficult difficult situation and please do let us know if we are to remove them or not. I have put some comments on those airlines uh, up to the local offices to say if they're going to be engaged or not. Okay. So for the timeline, we're targeting until the end of May for this and... Uh, there is a question. Uh, can we... Um, is there any chance to move the deadline to June until Easter? Um, to be, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I see no problem with that. I think we've launched it quite late, so I think that's fair enough. However, uh, I would have to discuss with the TNP people because obviously you have other work as well, and I, 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 I have, I'll, I'll make sure that if they're aligned with it and they're agreeable with it, um, then I, I see no problem to move it. Uh, um, what would you reckon? End of June would be. Um, yes, that um, um, it's up to you. June, I, I don't know. Uh, you, you know better on me. You see, for me, there's no. We're not having to produce anything for the board, so I'm not uh, too concerned on when it's completed. But I definitely think we we'd want it ready for uh, um, you know for, for the for the towards the end of the year because we might have to follow up on that. Yeah. So yeah, I think in in theory acceptable if all of the T and G people are agreeable because obviously if that goes into some other campaigns then Definitely. that's fine with me. So we'll take that on board, Coco. Okay, let's move on because uh, I think we're running out of time and uh, I want to give you uh, plenty of time. Um, yep, lots of information I've covered on the website. So we've got a, uh, the certification registry mentioned in focus, change readiness guide um, for the airlines. So that's uh, essentially, so, so please when you're speaking to the airlines, make them aware that we have a lot of these these uh, tools, documents available and please, uh, you know, um, I'm more than happy to to speak with anyone. I know Ronnie in Beijing is, and and Cecile and uh, Valerie will give support in, in in the other regions as well. So um, make point them towards us if they need any help. Um, that's everything on it. I'll quickly go through the questionnaire. Let's just quickly uh, uh, have a look at the questionnaires, and then uh, we can hand over for questioning and let you get on with your day. <laughs> Um, it's not any different, really, from last year. Uh, we have few ones, Sorry, we have changed a bit. But We've changed changed a bit, not much. So it's essentially the same. The great thing is, is that we can benchmark yeah. the results against previous years, and it's and we've got three or four good. Um, uh, campaign results, years of results, and and that's a great help. Um, for for me and for the team in in, um, in in sort of seeing where airlines are, seeing how their attitudes have changed, and even um, and comparing uh, between what what's um, happened a few years ago and what's happening today. So, you know, um, and the, and the great thing on. I, I, Hopefully, we're using the same yeah. survey. Uh, all of the bugs that you know they occasionally come up, they're all ironed out, so uh, there shouldn't be any uh, fingers crossed, any issues uh, with that. So, uh, again, it's two parts. Do you plan to do NDC? Yes. Okay. Then we want a bit more information. No. Then we we want to we want to know uh, your reasons why not. If you don't know, again. Uh, that, you might as well have said no. So let's let's compare compare on that. So um, I'm I'm wondering maybe we might adapt question five before we actually send it out because maybe we you know I don't think anyone's only doing offer. Uh, so okay. we could maybe we'll reword that question. But the the benefits uh, they they're. Uh, pretty expl explanatory, and obviously, if they don't know what these benefits mean, then then we have a problem. We have a problem, yeah. So we'll be happy to explain them. 
Um, where does your airline stand? Uh, we haven't evaluated. Yeah, there's, it's um, most of the time where the, the answer I, I, I see is that um, it's, it's usually the first one or two that they have. I mean, they're aware of the benefits. It's just they haven't been able to get the resources or, or to put a project team uh, together. It's very few that are going to be in the lower ones, in, in which case they're moving ahead with a project. But hopefully there will be some, and those are the ones we'll, we'll aim at for the targets. Uh, when do you expect to go live? And, and please ask any questions. I hope I'm not rushing through uh, too fast on this. Um, who are you planning on, on working with? So is that an online travel agency, such as a kind of Expedia? Uh, travel meta search such as uh, Kayak or Skyscanner, uh, a travel management company such as Thomas Cook or El Corte Inglés, or content aggregators, current GDS or new entrants. So that could be obviously the uh, Amadeus, Sabre, Galileo, or it could be one of these new uh, entrants like a JRT or a Fairlogix or, or, or uh, Atris. Uh, are you planning on reporting your NDC transactions with IATA agents in a, in a BSP? Now, this is a, a key question because um, obviously I didn't do a technical presentation, but what happens when is that when an airline implements NDC and it makes the offers, those transactions are not going through the traditional GDS. And by not going through the GDS, they don't get reported to the BSP. So by default, any airline implementing NDC is 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 outside the BSP. Uh, and obviously, um, there are huge benefits. You don't need me to tell you that. Um, but uh, we want them in the BSP. So that this is a key question to to um, to ask them. Um, so yeah, anything on your roadmap? Uh, have a look at the questionnaire when, when we're launching it. If there's anything you don't understand, of course, fire, fire off to me and I'll be uh, more than happy to uh, explain the, the meaning behind it. Uh, so yeah, we. so then we move to the, these are the sort of questions where, uh, and I rem remember on the survey, you'll be jumping between a lot of these questions. So obviously where they don't apply, we're not going to be asking um, an airline that said they're not implementing if they're going to, in, you know, you know, if they have plans in the BSP. So, um, yeah, these these questions will be um, as appropriate. So we want to see if they need help. So where do they want, want us to help? We want to know if they're aware of what's what's available on the website. And it might be worth your while to check just to have a, a, a sort of brief navigate around just to see what's there. Um, and and of course, the documentation, the air tech zone, that's a key one because I, I quite often get asked technical questions and they could be easily um, channeled through the air tech zone. So, um, do they need technical support? So remember, we offer um, we offer not only uh, training. So we have a number of NDC uh, related courses that are run by ITDI, but we're also offering consulting. And quite recently, uh, we conducted consulting with Royal Air Maroc. Um, we in the past we've done consulting with um, SAS and also with um, Aeroflot. And now Aeroflot are one of our leaderboard airlines. So congratulations, Vladimir. Um, and also we're, we, we're doing, um, we, we, we do have a number of training. We can do in-house training and indeed SAS are looking to have a dedicated training course for their salespeople, 41 sales reps. In um, in May, uh, we'll be will be trained in Stockholm. So uh, please keep that in mind when um, when when talking with the airlines. If any of them are looking for any assistance, we'll be happy to talk to them. And that is it. I think. Yep, we're forty six minutes by my reckoning. So if you have any questions, uh, can we change? Yeah. Uh, yes, I think that's very sensible, Laura. We don't want to get uh, 
uh, too <laughs> accused of anything of political incorrectness there. So yeah, I think that's a very sensible suggestion. Good. So we'll we'll definitely look to move towards the um, towards the end of June, I I, I think. Um, <coughs> Yeah, and I'll address some of the questions in the uh, in the in the in the survey. And I don't see anybody typing anymore. So again, um, if there's something that comes up after this webcast, please feel free to send a message to myself or your TMP manager or to David directly. So if there's no further question, thank you so much for your time and have a good day to everybody. Thank you, everyone.